Buenas tardes. Mi nombre es Cuya. Good afternoon. My name is Leticia Lopez Domingo. I work in Telefónica Spain in innovation. And uh, today we are going to talk about mobility of the future, uh, hyper connected, hyper connected, secure, and sustainable mobility is one of the big areas uh, uh, that uh, 5G enables. And we are going to explain to you what we are doing in this specific field. My name is Alejandro Alonso, expert of uh, innovation in Telefonica. We are going to talk about uh, the mobility of the future, hyper-connected, secure, and sustainable. And uh, we are going to talk about uh, the technological pillars of future mobility. I'm going to tell you which are the levers that we can use uh, for the mobility. And then Leticia is going to explain the importance of mobility, the values of Telefonica. And then finally, I'm going to give you some examples of what we do with the pilots that are already a reality, and then give you examples of uh, what we are going to talk about technological pillars, uh, you already know the foundations of 5G as the main levers. They give us uh, high velocities, uh, one milliseconds of low latency, very reliable communications, and one million of devices per uh, square kilometer. So they are the enabler, the lever of the future. They are secure as well because uh, the standard is evolving, is supporting the authentication and uh, with uh, all this uh, security, this um, 5G, we have different enables and uh, levers that use uh, these uh, foundations. First of all, we have the edge computing. We are not going to give you details of the edge computing because you all know what it is, regionalizing the contents, the computation has to get close to the data, reducing the latency and regionalizing the contents. Then we need the 5G V2X technology, the connected car will be able to talk with the environment, the road, the, uh, the drivers of the bus, the pedestrians, etc. The other enab enabler or lever is the precise positioning. We use Google Maps and uh, different applications that give us uh, a precision of 10, 15 meters. For standard users, this is enough. But uh, when we go to mobility in industrial sectors or in conventional roads, is it? This is not enough. We need a precision of five centimeters that allow us to locate depending on the lane, to allocate ourselves lane-wise. We will be able to increase the positioning in the globe. And then finally, another enabler is the network slicing. When the networks can give us a density of one million devices per square kilometer, then Every device demands different things. It's not the same mobility in a touristic bus that an ambulance. So the network slicing is a very useful and complex technology that is here to stay. It can be applied in mobility. So as I said, we are going to use all the different enablers and levers. First, uh, V2X and technology that allows the cars to talk with the environment. This technology uh, uses 4G and then towards 5G, and they are standardized uh, by G 3GPB, the three generation partnership uh, project. And the users uh, are experiencing it. Our smartphones are evolving, it's connectivity, but it's not only these, it's a retro compatibility because a smartphone can calls and messages, multimedia messages to a smartphone that uh, was bought 10 years ago. This is going to happen the same with the fleet and uh, the vehicles will be able to talk to the vehicles that are manufactured in 10 years time, incrementing the connectivity. We always talk about the standardization in cellular networks, and this is very important because all the ecosystem has to cooperate, but also the standardization in another layer in the applications. What we do above 
these networks. There are different bodies that are standardizing these the vehicles that are communicating between them. For example, at sea, the vehicles send some trajectories, information about the trajectory, the location, different parameters, so that all these parameters are known by others. We also have the centralized notification messages that are sent when we need to send our warning. For example, when the weather is not uh, uh, is uh, not the proper weather, and then we have the SAA, the topology of our crossing roads, uh, and uh, with the movements that are allowed, uh, that vehicles are allowed to do, and also the signal phase and uh, timing SPAT, when the traffic light is going to change, in order to know depending on how it's going to change. And we have also IVI, e -V -I, I -V -I, the typical uh, signaling panels and road works, uh, reducing uh, the maximum speed. It is uh, used through these IVI, the road work, work warning, the road works warning for when there are warnings when you need to cut a lane in the road. These type of messages are standardized and they are sent to the environment. And then finally, the GLOSA. It is a message that allows us to determine the optimal speed. For example, if it's um, if the traffic light is green and it's going to change to red, then the message is going to be stop the car because the, the traffic light is going to change to red. So all this different in the information, the vehicle to the network, the vehicle to the vehicle, the vehicle to the infrastructure, the vehicle to the pedestrian has two different interfaces. Now we are used to, to using the indirect interface. So we use the mobile network if I want to make a phone call, as you can see, and then I can talk to someone who is not close to me. And these indirect communications allow vehicles to talk in an indirect way using the deployed 5G in the 4G network or 5G networks. What's the innovation about this? That it allows a, a different interface. And uh, now we use Bluetooth end-to-end, uh, -to -end, Wi-Fi end-to-end, and uh, here we are standardizing a direct network with very low latencies and very wide bandwidth. And uh, if I have to give you more details about this direct intercommunication, it was standardized back in the year 2014 in order to exchange information between smartphones. But there were already technologies like Bluetooth that allowed this to happen, so it was not implemented. And then in 2017, 3GPP realized that this technology was very useful for the connected vehicles to connect all the uh, fleets in a direct way. And then they improved the Doppler effect so that the technology is functional up to 500 kilometers per hour relative speed, for example. If uh, there are two cars uh, uh, crossing at 250 kilometers per hour, we improve uh, the cellular connectivity to allow for this to happen. And then this evolved uh, with uh, better bandwidth, but then this uh, started to use uh, with 5G, reducing the latency and, and allowing very wide bandwidth and even managing this direct link by the operator, increasing the quality of the service, which is very important in vehicles. Another technology, if you mentioned, is the ultra precise positioning. And in the standard environments, we need a, a very precise positioning centimeter wise and there are different networks so GNSS uh, that locate us on the globe we are normally using GPS and Galileo 
GLONASS, which is a Russian, Galileo, which is European, and Beidou, which is Chinese. So they um, emit a number of frequencies. And uh, when these signals get to the ionosphere, they are distorted. Then the final users lose this uh, precision and then it's of about 10, 15 meters. And as I said, it's not enough in an industrial environment. So what can 5G do? When we deploy this uh, network, we deploy real-time kinematics technology, RTKK. And uh, this means that we have a, a GNSS uh, um, station with a marker or a buoy, a beacon, so to say, and then the topographer knows where the beacon is located. And then this beacon also knows the signal that they receive from the satellites uh, degraded by the ionosphere. So the beacon with this uh, information knows where exactly I am because there was this topographer that determined it and I know exactly the location of the different signals that I obtain from the satellite with the, this uh, uh, decalage. So the, it can create some algorithms uh, and the signal is recovered again. It is perfect and it gives us this uh, precision of 5 uh, 10 centimeters. And this can be applied in this uh, mobility, our cars, in industrial fields, uh, also bicycles, scooters, uh, smartphones as pedestrians and also logistics. So in the future, the antennae that we deploy is going to give us this ultra precise uh, positioning. and. Uh, this way, it can be used for other fields. Another enabler, another lever we are using, which is very complex but very interesting, is the network slicing. We can subdivide the, re the, the network. When you give your service to more than one million devices, you need to cover different types of demand. So we can have different uh, slices and uh, also the network can reserve some resources in all the domains for vehicles. We see a very clear example. We have a slice for a smarter transport with the edge region, with safety, and uh, we need uh, an immediate latency. That's why we use this edge. But then we also have information in which the latency is not very important, for example, analytics or weather uh, forecasts. And we have another slice in gaming, and we can have uh, services in edge so that uh, the uh, the travelers inside the car can use the gaming capabilities. And uh, we can move the contents between the different ge ge geographical locations depending on the different forecasts that the networks uh, do. They are represented here in green and yellow. We allow, we guarantee the continuity of the service and then the experience is improved. Here they are, it, the first ones are related, as you can see on the screen, related to 5G. And uh, the fourth identifier is only for communication between vehicles. This uh, shows us how important a slicing is going to be in the vehicle communications with this layer reserved for them. And as I said, these 5G networks are very secure because they evolve and uh, In the, vehicular, in the vehicle environment uh, is also uh, crucial. So we need to have a central point of uh, contact, uh, European Union CPOC in the European Union. It already exists and uh, with uh, different certification authorities based on a public key uh, certification. So we have a list where you can have the different certification authorities that can certify vehicles giving additional security to the vehicle. So imagine that Telefonica this deploys the Route CA with the two bodies, the Enrollment Authority, and it can be linked to the specific number of the car 
the we all know that uh, all the cars have this and uh, the car number the car chassis and uh, it is uh, then the authorization target that gives a certification to the automated vehicle with 10 tickets that are going to expire in 10 days then the car uses all the certificates these 10 certificates uh, issued by the AA and uh, this way it can be communicated in a very safe way and this uh, replicating all the capabilities that we mentioned, anonymization, confidentiality, integrity of the information of the environment, non-repudiation, and authentication uh, using the technological enablers that the network. Once we explained all these, now Letitia is going to explain to you all the vision of Telefonica with the different demos we are doing. Well, all these... Um, capabilities uh, that Alex mentioned, technological ones, have a goal, the digitalization of mobility. And uh, in order to achieve the mobility of the future, we a hyper hyper connected, secure, and uh, sustainable. Because uh, in Telefonica, we believe that uh, the V2X uh, tools must be the axis or the foundations of all the security measures of mobility and digitalization because it is clear that this hyperconnectivity that is going to give us 5G and these uh, V2X uh, tools are going to be the keys to give solution to problems that we are facing nowadays, accidents, and we have consolidated data from the DGT and uh, our roads uh, with 102,000 uh, accidents, uh, 800 uh, were fatal. So 66% of these accidents take place in the interurban roads. And more than 90% of such accidents are caused by a human mistake, destruction, velocity, or, or alcohol. So all the information that we can forecast and give beforehand to the driver is going to decrease this rate. And apart from reducing these accidents, it's going to improve the efficiency of the traffic and an optimization of the use of the gas and reducing the uh, greenhouse effect gases. So the value chain is being transformed apart from the traditional players, the automakers, the providers of infrastructures, applications. We have a new player. We are the new players the telecommunications operators. And uh, why? Because we are talking about hyperconnectivity and connected mobility. Why a telecommunications operator and why Telefonica? Well, because we have our mobile networks, our 4K networks are because we have a very dense uh, penetration in the population, our 4G networks, we can implement uh, the first uh, services uh, because we have more than 80% of coverage of a 5G network with a plan to evolve and penetrate uh, in the following years because we are also deploying some edge computing servers and uh, we have four nodes deployed uh, here in uh, Spain and uh, many more in the future. And uh, why? Which are the reasons? Because our network already gives and offers this ciphered uh, um, information. And uh, they can be isolated. It means that 
they are ciphered, they are coded, and they can be isolated from the conventional traffic. And we have implemented it with APNs, and it's uh, going to have a specific slice in the future. So we, from innovation, we've been, for the last four years, doing some pilot project in mobility that try to boost and show how 5G enables uh, new cases. And uh, to us, we have differentiated three different ecosystems in which mobility systems uh, make a lot of sense and are very powerful in the smart cities, in smart roads, and in smart industry. And when we talk about smart cities, we talk about uh, making smart cities and safe cities. Um, so we need to have different optimizations of the public transport or some smart zebra crossings or services that contribute in this um, safety and making the traffic more efficient. Also in the road, we are focusing a lot because most of the accidents, fatal accidents, take place in roads. And uh, we are talking about um, having uh, roads, inter-urban roads that are uh, safer. And uh, how are we going to do that with the smart tools, the smart tunnels, using sensors, using uh, signaling panels. So there's uh, still a, long to, a, a lot of things to do in smart roads. And this technology of connected cars can be used also in the industry. And uh, here we talk about uh, giving coordination services to improve safety, platooning services, the use of drones for infrastructure, monitoring and maintenance also, and uh, etc. And also the remote driving, because with 5T and the bandwidth, we can enable different types of remote driving. And uh, for the past years, Four years, we've done different pilots in these uh, three verticals. And uh, two years ago, we presented with uh, SEAT a pilot project in a real environment here in Hospitalet with sensors and, uh, and our traffic light and different user cases of assistance to driving when there are cyclists or pedestrians. But in this edition, we are going to focus more on smart roads and smart industry. And I'm going to show to demos one is here. And in the ámbito of the smart roads, in smart roads, uh, this is our first uh, connected tunnel in Spain. And the first one in Europe, this tunnel is in Ferexal in Galicia. And it is the first step towards the smart roads of the future. We've done it with collaboration of all these different partners. Uh, it is a uh, long list. Uh, as an automaker, Stellantis, SeaTag, Ineco, and the CISA that allowed us with the infrastructure, and uh, also the customer is uh, Migma. So what did we do? Well, we connected the tunnel to offer assistance to the driving, to the vehicles in the entrance and then during uh, the tunnel. 600 meters uh, and of tunnel. And here you can see what we've done. This is uh, 5G latencies, driving assistance with very low latency. And uh, we have given 5G coverage. And uh, so, there we can see the two antennae, the 
4G and the 5G to give coverage to the vehicles. And uh, we have then two more aerials, two more antennae and in the tunnel. And uh, we have these cameras uh, that uh, using artificial algorithms, artificial vision algorithms, detect uh, situations, uh, irregular ones like smoke or a pedestrian or an obstacle or this, all these allows us to have uh, these uh, thermal cameras. And uh, we have also installed two more cameras and uh, with OCR to identify the type of vehicle, electrical vehicle, and uh, in order to detect uh, hazardous uh, uh, load. And also we need to double check the visibility and also our weather station in the end of the tunnel. and. Uh, to double check the sensitivity and the slippery conditions of the pavement. And in order to see vehicle to infrastructure cases, so everything that happened in the tunnel was communicated to the vehicles in real time in order to anticipate the risk situations if there is an obstacle, for example, or this happens a lot. In Galicia, you get into the tunnel, and it's very shiny, but then you get outside the tunnel and it's rainy or it's snowy. So we give information about the situation of the weather in the end. And also if the pavement is slippery, if the visibility is uh, reduced and also V2V, vehicle to vehicle cases like, for example, the activation of the emergency lights from a car or, for example, when you press the brake suddenly, and uh, as I said, the vehicle we did some partnerships with Estelantes, and the, they are connected. They had a natively embarked unit, 5G, and uh, using the technology that uh, Alex mentioned before. And this way, the vehicle can communicate with the environment, and also for the connected vehicles uh, to other vehicles with a smartphone and uh, an app V2X. And uh, don't get scared, but one of the capabilities of this project was uh, the edge computing. This um, server where all the information obtained by the cameras uh, and by the vehicle is centralized and processed in a server that is located in Galicia. And uh, this server is very complex because it collects all the information of the sensors and establishes the thresholds and uh, it communicates with the cars and the information is offered in a dashboard. In a dashboard, this is the dashboard and uh, for Enigma, for the different operators of the tunnel, where they could see any warnings, information of the sensors, the cameras, and some statistics. So if there is an obstacle following the example, in real time, you can give information to the vehicle in this dashboard, and uh, then the Enigma the client could double check it, also the video, and the cameras had 
access in real time, reproduce the situation, etc. This is the project of the connected tunnel, and then in the industry industry vertical, we have another project that we brought to the Mobile World Capital, the Mobile World Congress, doing with APM terminals, our, our client. We have the Mobile World Capital and the collaboration of all the partners at Ficosa and Hardeman. This uh, project uh, wants to apply the connected uh, car technology in the port in order to increase the safety of the workers in the port very fast because we are going to give you a video the main protagonists are these uh, straddle carrier cranes uh, they when there is a crash uh, the injuries are very severe and talking to APM, they said that in the States, they had a very important crash. So they asked what we can do in order to reinforce the safety. That's why we applied this technology. It is very important. We connected the cranes with the V2X technology using the technology of precise localization. We know exactly, precisely where the cranes are, the lorries, the workers, and we also virtualize the physical elements. These are, this is all brought to the server, and then the server creates algorithms, and if there is a crash, then they trigger the warning. And I think that we can watch the video where they explain everything. And if you have any questions, uh, you can ask them in the end. Thank you. APM Terminals, uno de los mayores operadores de servicios portuarios y terrestres del mundo, está llevando a cabo en su terminal de Barcelona un piloto 5G para mejorar su seguridad. Esta prueba piloto que estamos desarrollando con Telefónica consiste concretamente en intentar dar ayudas a los manipulantes de nuestra maquinaria pesada con el fin de poder evitar colisiones, accidentes, atropellos de una forma rápida y eficaz. El objeto de este proyecto son las grúas Straddle Carrier. Son grúas que se conducen a 12 metros de altura que tiene puntos ciegos inevitables. Para resolver esta problemática lo que hemos hecho ha sido conectar a las grúas, a los camiones y al personal de a pie de la terminal para que envíen información en tiempo real sobre su localización, sobre su velocidad y sobre su trayectoria. Esta información se envía a un servidor donde se procesa, se aplican los algoritmos de cálculo de trayectorias y de prevención de accidentes para detectar potenciales situaciones de riesgo y así alertar tanto al personal de estiva como al personal de la terminal. A las grúas les estamos dotando de una unidad de embarcada y al personal de a pie y a los camiones les estamos dotando de un smartphone con una aplicación V2X. Stop. Este proyecto piloto se basa en tecnologías como celular V2X, hasta ahora aplicada al coche conectado, y en las ultrabajas latencias que nos proporciona 5G y los servidores de Edge Computing. Además, se completa con una tecnología de localización precisa que nos permite tener localizaciones a nivel de centímetros. Estamos siendo pioneros en la aplicación de toda esta combinación de tecnologías en el ámbito industrial y concretamente en una terminal portuaria. Los casos de uso concreto los hemos dividido en dos. El poder tener geolocalizados y posicionados virtualmente los objetos fijos, como podrían ser contenedores, torres de iluminación, pasarelas de rifles, y el poder geolocalizar a los elementos móviles. Además, nos permitirá disponer de un dashboard donde podremos monitorizar en tiempo real todas nuestras máquinas y todas nuestras personas para tener una imagen de la situación que tenemos en la terminal. Este proyecto tiene como socios principales a APM Terminals, Mobile World Capital y Telefónica. 
También contamos con la colaboración de otros partners como son Ficosa y Harman. Tecnologías como el 5G, el Edge Computing o el Internet de las Cosas no solo van a ayudar a automatizar, digitalizar, transformar la industria, sino que además van a dar un plus de seguridad a las personas en su día a día, en su trabajo diario y permitir que puedan volver a casa de forma segura. Pues nosotros con, con este vídeo... So we finish with this video and uh, we'll continue developing a lot of things. We had an important roadmap in order to the, continue developing these mobility projects and also booming these uh, technologies, uh, VR, X and 5G. Thank you. Thank you very much. I think that there are some questions. If it has uh, some mechanism to prevent the hacking of the cars, it is a robust, uh, hyper-secure network, and then the standard is evolving, detecting some gaps that are being corrected. So 5G is hyper-secure, but we also do something else uh, because we develop this uh, public key infrastructure in order to secure even more the vehicle um, environments. And there's another question. Uh, do you think that uh, all the antennae 5G are going to come with a BPK? Yes, it's going to be like this in the future. And uh, nowadays, uh, we are installing some specific antennae with the RTK servers. But in the future, 5G antennae are going to have this GNSS capability and RTK servers so that are going to give us these precise localizations. And uh, we are going to use all the capillarity of our stations in order to have a network of RTK connections that are well distributed and precise in order to have very reliable information. And there is another question. So these cranes uh, are autonomous? No, they are not. We are talking about drivers, uh, driver-assisted uh, cranes. Uh, and uh, it's going to keep on evolving. And uh, we can do a remote uh, driving and second stage and then autonomous screen. But that is still a long way to go before getting to these uh, autonomous cranes. And we have to reduce costs because having these uh, cranes with all these sensors uh, means uh, a lot of money. So we need to take small steps. Well, this was all. Thank you very much for your time and good evening.